The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar on CN Pilot 802.11 AC Wi-Fi solutions. Um, if you have any questions, please put them on the messaging in the right. And uh, without further ado, here is uh, Chaitan to give you your presentation. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning and uh, good evening, depending on your time zone. Uh, this is a overview of Cambium's uh, newest uh, product line, the CN Pilot Enterprise and Managed Home Small Business Routers. What we'll go over today is a brief introduction, uh, especially for those who are new to Cambium and who Cambium is, and, and then we'll launch into our product line. Uh, it's meant to be an overview with uh, some insight into where we are headed. Uh, but We'd still like to keep this as informal as possible given the number of attendees. Uh, we'll try and do our best. Uh, so you please use the uh, raise hand button there uh, as you uh, or type your questions on the on the webinar uh, panel. And we'll pause along the way, take questions, and answer as many questions as we can. So with that, uh, let's get started. Uh, before we launch into the products, a uh, quick introduction to who Cambium Networks is for those who are not fully familiar with us. We are a spin-off of Motorola. Uh, we've been a privately held business for the last five years. And from our legacy of developing outdoor fixed wireless broadband equipment, we now have over five and a half million products out in the field. We're deployed in over 150 countries in all six continents and we sell through the channel and we have over 2,000 channel partners to bring our products uh, to our customers. In terms of our R&D, we are an R&D intensive company. Uh, we have R&D centers in three countries, uh, primarily in US, U UK, and India. And in, and in the US, we're based in Chicago and in Silicon Valley. We launched our Wi-Fi product line in 2015. And since launch, we are now deployed literally pretty much in all major countries in the world. This is a screenshot from our management system uh, that gives you uh, the registration of where the equipment is deployed. So you, what you're seeing here is a three-month-old snapshot of our various deployments in the last uh, four to five quarters since the product launched. In terms of our vision for Wi-Fi, uh, what, one of the reasons we launched it was we felt that as we talked to our current customers, and prospective customers that there was a need for a Wi-Fi that spanned, that was not just for enterprise, but spanned ISPs who are interested in deploying enterprise Wi-Fi and enterprise IT as well. So we built a product line to appeal to both of these segments with a intelligent, what we call an intelligently managed, affordable, quick to deploy and easy to operate Wi-Fi. And, and as we go through our presentation, we'll try and uh, show some of the highlights in each of these uh, vision uh, words here. Our Wi-Fi is available for enterprises, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Uh, we do have a large number of service providers who we count as our current customers. And for those, uh, we have both indoor and outdoor products as well. On the indoor side, we for service providers, we also have our indoor home managed routers. And because of our legacy of deploying outdoor equipment for industrial uh, segments like oil and gas, uh, drilling and mining segments, uh, we are seeing our outdoor products starting to deploy in some of these segments as well. Now, as obviously many of you know, there are a number of Wi-Fi vendors out there uh, with different levels of sophistication and solution. So, this is a quick chart to show what is the gap that we believe there is in the market in terms of what our customers uh, would, are looking for. And what and this is the promise that we are looking to fulfill. Now, I, I, obviously, there are some very good uh, Wi-Fi vendors out there. 
uh, we tend to classify these vendors into two categories. Uh, those who have a rich legacy of development for over 10 years, uh, and these are very well and familiar known names. And those that occupy either the carpeted enterprise IT, they serve those uh, segments. And on the other hand, we have Wi-Fi vendors who also are uh, quite inexpensive, but also lack some of that sophistication and feature goodness. On both of these uh, segments, uh, if you look at the price of these of the equipment here, you'll see that uh, you can get Wi-Fi equipment either from the low 100 to the high 1000, depending on flavor of indoor and outdoor. And with Cambium, we come in at somewhere in the middle with more of an emphasis on quality, more of an emphasis on keeping the price affordable, and we'll go through the pricing at the end. But we also bring some of the support that low uh, low price vendors do not, such as 24 by 7 uh, phone call support, our rich presence of channel partners who are there to support the product, as also our own in-house field uh, sales personnel and field technical engineers who are there to visit customer sites and resolve issues uh, or demonstrate product features at customer locations. So we have a high touch yet affordable quality product. And with that all said, uh, this is our Wi-Fi product line. It consists of indoor, outdoor routers, and home and small business routers. And all of our uh, access points and routers are managed by our common management solution called CN Maestro. CN Maestro is our controller that manages all of these products together. CN Maestro was really developed ground up uh, in Cambium. This is both a cloud-based management system as well as it's available as an on-premises software-based management system, management and controller system. So you can, uh, depending on the on the customer's preference, uh, the management system can be deployed either in the cloud or on customer premises. And we really, really emphasize three key features here. Uh, the first and foremost thing, especially in this day and age, is around security and privacy. The management system itself was designed to not only manage Wi-Fi, but also be able to manage a lot of the uh, wireless broadband equipment that Cambium already has deployed in the field. And as many of you may have heard, uh, we just launched our first industrial IoT product, CN Reach. And in, in the Internet of Things uh, space, CN Maestro is designed to manage tens of thousands of equipment. Starting from the very first step, when access points on board to CN Maestro, uh, we've ensured that there is a serial, there are random pseudo serial numbers in our access points that uh, that can be easily duplicated. Uh, and these uh, CN Maestro authenticates the access point. We use SSL for communication, I including the protocol used for communication. Uh, CN Maestro does not reach out to the equipment, unlike SNMP. It's the equipment that reaches back into CN Maestro using HTTPS protocol. So all of these layers we've included, we've built uh, industry-proven uh, se secure, secure protocols. In addition to that, it includes firewall. It includes uh, features to, uh, to prevent or be resilient to denial of service attacks. And it includes uh, IP address restriction as well. And in the realm of privacy, one of the key things is uh, we are compliant with EU safe harbor laws. So no, no, uh, no, uh, no customer visible data is carried back to the cloud. Uh, or very limited information such as the client address is carried back, uh, but nothing to do with the actual data is carried back into the cloud. And in addition to that, because it's built uh, ground up in the cloud, uh, we've made sure that it can scale because we see the world of tomorrow as connecting tens of thousands of devices and also that we're, we're based all around the world, so geo-redundancy is a very important feature of our deployment in the crowd, cloud. 
And with the with the cloud, you automatically get some of these features backup replication as well. So all of that put together uh, is CN Maestro managing Wi-Fi, which we call CN Maestro controller. Uh, a couple of slides here on uh, giving you an insight into what CN Maestro does. The first and foremost thing is because it's ground up, it's not some old or uh, older controller that is spun off into the cloud. We've been able to uh, gain some of the efficiencies and build on some of the industry's progress in developing true cloud-based architecture. Uh, it's got a distributed process, redundancy, and is distributed and is deployed currently in at least three data centers around the world. One of the other key things that we've developed from day one is zero touch fast onboarding. If you consider this versus SNMP, it's an order of magnitude faster to onboard a device through CN Maestro than, than on the cloud. And as you can see from the direction of these arrows, uh, in traditional SNMP, the manager contacts the device. That often has, to res has results in work where you have to go to the firewall, open certain phone ports for inbound access, which also uh, uh, increase the security hole in your network. Whereas with CN Maestro, the device contacts the manager and uses standard HTTPS. So most firewalls allow HTTPS traffic to pass through. And so there's very little mucking around with all of the other equipment in the network when you try to get a device on board. So as long as the device has internet access, you're almost always the device is able to contact CN Maestro. And the last thing is because it's in the cloud, you get some of the efficiency and scale of building common platform across multiple customers. But because of the emphasis on customer privacy, we've made sure that no two customers can see each other's data. And so multi-tenancy is built into CN Maestro from day one. And so all of this put together really does one simple thing. It enables large scale fast deployment with very little friction. Here's an example of what we mean by that. In every C CN pilot device, uh, you can scan the serial number right off of the box without even opening the box. And, and once that serial number is entered into CN Maestro, you can pretty much uh, take ownership of the equipment and proceed with the configuration and provisioning activity even before the equipment is deployed to the field. Now that's not something that uh, is of great value if you're deploying one or 10, 10 of these access points. But as we look forward to tomorrow's deployment, where we see service providers, where we see even certain system integrators start to go in and deploy thousands of access points, thousands of uh, outdoor devices, this starts to become a very useful feature because you can literally separate the provisioning and installation activity, which is a highly, which requires more training. Uh, you can centralize it. And then you can separate it from the installation, which requires uh, an order of training as far as installation goes, but you don't have to learn all of the nuances of setting up and running the equipment. The benefit of that is you can delink the timelines as well. Uh, you can conduct the provisioning activity first or you can conduct it later, but you can always install it separately. Once the equipment is installed in the ground, the equipment contacts CN Maestro, pulls down the config, registers, and upgrades. And, and so what happens is all of these activities happen pretty much seamlessly. Uh, the installer is responsible only for making sure that the equipment is powered on. He sees the LED, he or she sees the, red LED, uh, the green LED, and for uh, telling you whether the equipment is contacted with CN Maestro and is in working order or not. So basically, all of this le leading to much more faster deployment. You don't need to go into the field and touch the equipment by connecting cables and any of that uh, to the equipment itself. There's also another benefit for those who are deploying uh, Wi-Fi especially both outdoor and service provider Wi-Fi. With the outdoor Wi-Fi, what we're seeing here now is, uh, while fiber is still a preferred method of connecting outdoor equipment, 
uh, to the back to get, getting it to the internet. And not every outdoor location uh, gives you the flexibility to pull a fiber line. Uh, sometimes uh, there is tremendous amount of work, uh, uh, the trenching work required, or even if you are using air strung fiber, there is right of access and other issues. So one of the benefits of using Cambium is that we are able to tie three of our products together. We are able to tie our Wi-Fi and our uh, management and our backhaul together. So what that me means is uh, with our home, home product lines, we have many customers around the world. In the US, we have customers in suburban uh, cities and rural areas uh, who don't have the benefit of a wired uh, access who are now pulling in megabits uh, high speed, who are now able to give high speed internet connection to their customers, these ISPs, who we call the WISPs. And these uh, wireless ISPs uh, use Cambium's backhaul to connect, uh, which is literally an antenna on top of a roof, and, that, and then bring internet access down. And then they're able to supply Cambium's CN uh, Pilot R200 or R201 product which help you manage, which help you deploy Wi-Fi inside the house. And by tying both the Wi-Fi router, the wireless backhaul, and CN Maestro together, we're able to give you the benefits of unified management. We've got deployments around the world where we have outdoor Wi-Fi, and especially in outdoor Wi-Fi, it's not always too easy to pull fiber to where you want to deploy the access point, uh, because there are two different considerations involved in it. In that case, we've got outdoor Wi-Fi and wireless backhaul uh, managed by CN Maestro. So in each of these cases, our controller ties together outdoor Wi-Fi and wireless backhaul uh, and giving you the benefit of uh, troubleshooting and one single pane of glass management. Here is a screenshot of, that illustrates what I just said. Uh, with, with this, we've, uh, this you, you're able to see on one screen your wireless backhaul equipment your uh, wireless LAN equipment as well, the Wi-Fi equipment. And this also gives you a snapshot of what CN Maestro does. You're able to search for all of your equipment, see all of the statuses in one place, organize the equipment, and manage everything from one single account. Every admin can set up other admins on the account. And then on the top, you see a sticky dashboard where some of the same telco grade concepts are in included, such as critical alarms, major alarms, and minor alarms. One of the other benefits of tying a wireless backhaul and the Wi-Fi in one place is that when the Wi-Fi is backhauled uh, by the wireless broadband, we're able to give you all of the key stats in one location. We're able to show you the access points, the subscriber modules, and the clients all the way down to the clients in one place. So if there's any ever any issue of where the problem is, this screen immediately gives you a quick heads up on uh, whether you've got uh, interference problems on your wireless backhaul, or you've got some connectivity issues between the wireless backhaul and Wi-Fi, or if you've got something with some kind of known manufacturer on the client side as well. And that brings us to an interesting point. You're able to search the, the customer by the customer name pull up all of the clients attached under that account. And then when you do that, you can also see uh, who the manufacturers are. And this is a very important thing, especially if you are uh, providing managed business services or if you're an ISP providing uh, Wi-Fi. In, in which case, uh, customers may often call up and say that their Samsung or their Apple tablets cannot connect. Uh, and uh, whereas a lot of the management systems just start by looking at the clients from their IP and MAC address, and that's not always something that ordinary customers understand. So this gives the uh, personnel who are debugging the equipment uh, a view into who the, who the client is based on the manufacturer type that we display there. And we show not only the status of the clients, but you can go one level deeper with an in, in built-in remote pack, packet capture tool. And it also has another feature that is uh, not in the screenshot, but uh, has just come out in the software as well. you are able to see the unconnected clients as well. And that's a very critical point when customers call up and say that their clients cannot connect. 
uh, you, it's able to show you the clients that attempted connection and, and that way you can help you figure out if the, if the result was a bad password, which is typically more, you know, in most cases, that's the issue. So without, uh, so now we'll make a transition. I'll quickly go over the home router and we'll pause and take some questions and then transition to the enterprise segment of the presentation. A any questions uh, so far? Okay. With our home routers, uh, we've got the CN uh, pilot uh, enterprise equipment. The, in most of our cases, this is backhauled by wireless, uh, it's wireless backhaul, but can just as well be backhauled by a wired access as well. And one of the motivations for developing this equipment, obviously there are many indoor home routers. Uh, some are sold directly to end customers, some are deployed through service providers. Uh, what we found is that when service providers stop service at the door, they are often still on the hook for resolving issues when customers call them. And in many cases, uh, customers in, can't make out whether the problem is because of uh, the indoor equipment or because of the broadband. Uh, and I'm guilty of this as well, where, we, where customers call up their service provider and say that the internet isn't working. That's pretty much the words uh, people use. And now it's the service provider who has to figure out whether the problem is on, on their equipment coming into the home or is it the indoor premises equipment. With the service provider deploying Wi-Fi inside the house, uh, the service provider now has much more uh, direct connectivity to look at the complete end-to-end -end and be in a better position to figure out whether the it's a configuration error or whether it is a setup error uh, of the equipment inside the house. What we've done with our Wi-Fi product line is we've included not only the troubleshooting assistance to service providers, but in the Wi-Fi router itself, we've included uh, a PoE injector that can power the CPE on the roof. We've included four LAN ports uh, for consumers to connect uh, their traditional equipment. And in addition to that, it comes with an ATA connection as well, ATA box as well, two FXS ports. What that does is it allows service providers the built-in option of enabling voice service. So it gives you a way to get the routers into the home of consumers and be able to offer them a choice of who their voice over IP provider is. What that means is, is many of our uh, customers who use this option are able to now take some of those dollars that were going over the top to their, uh, over the top to you know, service providers, let's say like Vonage, and be able to direct some of those dollars to, to their uh, revenue line. These, uh, this indoor home routers come in two flavors. They come as 802.11n AC or just 802.11n, uh, catering to different price points and different levels of uh, future proofing that you require. In almost all cases, looking at where the world is headed, we recommend the 802.11 AC line. Uh, but we certainly have, uh, depending on budget, we certainly have service providers who are perfectly happy with a single band 802.11n router in the house as well. And now we're going to transition to Ambium's enterprise Wi-Fi APs. We have three APs that we've launched uh, between uh, last year and this year, uh, literally in the last uh, four quarters, indoor Wi-Fi uh, and two flavors of outdoor Wi-Fi. And of course, the uh, guys in the R&D are busy cranking out uh, more products for next year. With our indoor product line, it's 11 AC high density a Wi-Fi access point. Uh, it's a dual band, comes in, operates in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz simultaneously. And in the outdoor, we have two flavors. We have a single band 11N product, uh, which is for the budget conscious uh, entry level outdoor application. And we have an outdoor Wi-Fi access point, which is dual band, dual concurrent, uh, high capacity outdoor Wi-Fi. And we'll just go over some of the quick uh, product features here. With our indoor Wi-Fi, it comes with a 4, 5 dBi antenna, uh, provides omni coverage, can be mounted both on the ceiling and the wall, 
and is PoE powered and comes with one gigabit Ethernet port on the back end. It's very lightweight. Uh, that's one of the features. Customers who deployed it like it. Uh, no special mounting equipment required. And on, on the transmit power, it packs pretty much the top of, top of the spec uh, transmit power for indoor equipment, 24 dB and 25 dB, with an ability to control the transmit power on this equipment. It can support up to 256 users and 16 SSIDs and can do indoor standard Wi-Fi meshing as well. So it can mesh uh, not only to another E400, but can also mesh to any other uh, Wi-Fi device that supports standard-based Wi-Fi meshing. We also included small things like a dual memory bank uh, inside this device to hold both an active and backup software. And the, the device itself is uh, capable of operating from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius and is plenum rated as well, supporting the UL2043 standard. It also comes with a Kensington keyhole for security. And on, on this device are two LEDs. Uh, the LEDs tell you not only whether the Wi-Fi is operating or not, but also are able to tell you whether the equipment is connected to the controller or not. And these are software controlled, and in the future, there will be further enhancements to this uh, where you'd be able to tell if the device is, is connected to the controller and further if the device is also able to pass data traffic to a third party gateway. And we'd be able to do that through API support uh, coming in shortly on this uh, AP. Our next product is the outdoor Wi-Fi, uh, the single band flavor. We call it the EPMC 1000 hotspot uh, because this radio, this access point shares the same radio with our proven uh, outdoor uh, product line, the EPMP. And it comes with a, two pairs of external, it comes with external connectors and a pair of external antenna. So the product ships with uh, a 5 dBi Omni antenna and uh, mounting support. But depending on the need of the deployment, we have customers who have deployed this with sector antennas for sector coverage. And it packs a powerful punch, it has 20, uh, 28 and 29 dB of transmit power. So this radio has been very well uh, proven and as an access point has been deployed in various uh, places around the world, especially in areas where it's uh, people are looking for something at a very attractive price, but yet all of the features that they expect from good uh, enterprise vendors. One of the other key features of this equipment is it's got two ports. It's got a PoE in port uh, and it's got a PoE out port. And the, out, the second port can function as an aux PoE out, being able to power another Cambium equipment. So that's a very handy feature when you want to deploy outdoor Wi-Fi and you've got, you want to power that ra a second wireless uh, radio by daisy chaining the power. So you don't have to run two power lines up from one equipment to the other equipment. And this one is an IP55 form factor and comes in single band flavors, either as 2.4 or as 5 gigahertz. The next product in the, in the family is the E500. Uh, the E500 was launched uh, just this past uh, quarter. And we're already starting to see large number of these deployments take hold around the world in the last two months. The E500 is a high capacity access point, uh, comes with a 5 dBi Omni antenna, so it's made to look like a flat panel and, uh, and mount flush if required. But it's really an Omni antenna, so it can be mounted pretty much uh, any place and Omni coverage is required. It has high transmit power, 28 and 29 dB uh, on 2.4 and 5 and can connect up to 256 uh, clients at the same time across both bands, 16 SSIDs. And in our own testing, we've seen this in open field go as far as 800 feet. Uh, we've been a little conservative here and uh, uh, put in a data sheet number of 700, but we've seen definitely seen the, the connectivity go uh, more than 800 feet out, out in the open air. Again, again, your test results will vary depending on the RF conditions, 
or depending on presence of foliage or other sources of uh, interference. Uh, the E500, like the E400, supports outdoor meshing uh, and uh, can go quite a distance, on two, especially on 2.4, where our test, uh, it went up to 2 plus kilometers. Again, as uh, depending on the interference level, some of the throughputs might change as you go the distance. One of the other things we've done in an access point in this price range is we've uh, included features like LTE coexistence filter. When we look at where the uh, service providers are headed in the outdoor space, we see that uh, service providers are starting to deploy small cell LTE equipment. And LTE, because it's a protective spectrum, is capable of transmitting at much higher power. And there's often an interference fallout on 2.4 gigahertz. Adjacent to the 2.4 gigahertz band on either side are two uh, LTE bands reserved by 3GPP. And uh, in the US, for example, Sprint owns one of those bands. So if you're ever deploying outdoor Wi-Fi equipment that is not protected by such filters, you, you run the risk that when the service providers come in and deploy LTE, you are more susceptible to LTE interference. Other features of this equipment, uh, 67 uh, equipment, unlike the EPMP 1000, which is IP55. And in, in spite of all of this, it's an extremely lightweight product. It's just 880 grams, uh, no special mounting uh, required, uh, and pre pretty much can be mounted any place. So what else is in the E500? Uh, in terms of temperature, uh, we've really extended the range here from minus 30 to plus 60. Uh, included industrial memory components. Uh, typically, you don't find them at access points at this price. Uh, you, you have uh, included industrial grade NAND and NOR flashes and an onboard heater as well for cold start in, in those places uh, where that matters. In addition to that, small things like pressure venting uh, ensure that your electronics do not degrade over time with the humidity accumulation. And it comes with two gigabit Ethernet ports as well. Now, one of the things you can do with these two gigabit Ethernet ports is you can turn one of those ports into an aux PoE port and be able to wirelessly power another 802.3 AF equipment, for example, uh, one of the security cameras that can run on 802.3 AF, or you can switch it and run and power, uh, by software you can configure it to power Cambium's wireless backhaul equipment as well. Here's a test output of, on the E500 uh, that we ran against some very well-known brands. And again, uh, your individual test results will vary, but we were pretty uh, heartened by some of the data we found here. We found that when we ran it in 2.4, uh, the E500 held up pretty well uh, compared to a lot of the outdoor equipment that's out there. Uh, some of the outdoor equipment um, are priced at nearly $1,000 uh, list price. And the E500 uh, comes in at almost a third of that price. And as you can see, the performance was, has been pretty steady in the 2.4 band, almost holding well even up to 300 to 400 feet, which is typically the max deployment distance that uh, most people plan for outdoor Wi-Fi. On the 5 gigahertz, uh, the difference wasn't as dramatic. But once again, it's still dramatic when you look at the 100 to 300 feet range where the E500 uh, throughput held much more longer at higher uh, throughput than, than uh, some of the performing uh, competitor equipment. And now we'll segue from the hardware to the software features. Um, pretty much all of the software features that you expect from any good enterprise grade access point is in the E500. Uh, it, it supports WPA2 encryption and obviously uh, supports 256 users and up to 16 SSIDs, and signed software images as well. So you've got secure software executing on the E500. We've included features like auto, uh, not only auto channel selection, which uh, is typically expected in most enterprise grade equipment, but also features that can allow you to uh, turn the SSID on and off on a schedule. And that's a very handy feature when you're deploying uh, uh, in a school or in uh, outdoor event conditions where you want the SSIDs to turn on, let's say, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
and then stay turned off during the night. It's also a useful feature if you've got an SSID exclusively for the security cameras and you want those turned on from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. So this gives you a way to keep that SSID limited uh, just to the hours of usage uh, depending on the application. It's also got a portal. So the, one of the interesting things we've done with Cambium is uh, because of our emphasis on affordable Wi-Fi, the controller is not always required to operate many of our features. It's almost optional in most cases. We've got a built-in hotspot not only on the controller but also on the access point. So if you've got a couple of access points that you're deploying and you don't really want a controller, you don't need to put up a controller just to run the hotspot portals. You can create those hotspot flash pages on the access point itself. Another interesting feature is it also supports onboard DHCP server. So it can be turned, be turned from an access point to a wireless router. And then in terms of policy management, uh, we support the WMM for QoS and of course layer 2, 3, and 4 ACLs and DNS based ACL as well, giving you a, a level of control over uh, what kind of traffic to allow on the equipment. And in addition to that, you can also do throughput limiting per SSID uh, or per user as well. We support radius-based authentication on all of our enterprise equipment uh, with the ability to connect to multiple AAAs. So you can treat your AAAs per SSID. You can set them up per SSID. You can uh, also create one, one AAA to be an activate AAA and the second AAA to be a backup AAA. And we support dynamic VLAN assignment per SSID as well as radius-based authentication as well. Uh, we also support band steering and load balancing across the, across the individual bands on a single AP. Uh, with a, and that band steering is a useful feature when uh, you've got a, a mix of old and new equipment. Uh, for example, if you've got an iPhone in the network that is quite capable of going to the 5 gigahertz band, we try and redirect that equipment over to the 5 gigahertz. In terms of roaming, um, we support uh, an, uh, an another interesting feature here controllerless based roaming. You don't need a controller to go across multiple uh, access points. So in many vendors require you to have a controller if you want to do seamless roaming. In our case, up to 1,000 clients can roam across a network as long as the access points are connected on the back end on the same VLAN. So this eliminates the need for a controller in small size networks. Now as, as you scale, uh, we will introduce a feature where you have the optional ability to put a controller in the network and now the controller will enable you to scale across larger size networks. Giving you, between this, what we're really doing here is addressing two key, key attributes. We're making the network more scalable and we're also at the same time keeping affordability in mind by not requiring users to deploy a controller. Any, any questions? Okay. With Cambium's expertise in outdoor Wi-Fi, we have, uh, with outdoor equipment in general, we're now able to give you two ways in which you can connect Cambium's Wi-Fi equipment. One is through meshing, which allows you to connect not only outdoor equipment, outdoor equipment, but also mix your outdoor and indoor equipment. Because we use standard Wi-Fi meshing, you can uh, get, connect our equipment to any other vendor's Wi-Fi equipment as well, as long as that vendor supports stand, uh, standards-based Wi-Fi meshing. But where you've got a higher level of SLA required, where you, you want a more uh, capability of reusing frequencies, we recommend that you use uh, a point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint wireless backhaul to wirelessly carry Wi-Fi traffic. So what that means is you have two choices with Cambium. You can, for long, where you want to go longer distances, let's say a kilometer of wireless connectivity, uh, we recommend you go with uh, a equipment designed for that purpose. Or when you want convenience, uh, you go with standard Wi-Fi meshing. 
when you go with equipment designed for wireless backhaul access, one of the benefits is not only frequency reuse but also lower latency uh, because these protocols are much more efficient in terms of how and, and are optimized for wireless backhaul transport. And now we'll uh, transition to a few examples of where we are deployed. Uh, this is always the fun part. Uh, one of our latest deployment has been out of Italy uh, with our uh, partner CJ Telecom. Uh, here we've got indoor Wi-Fi equipment uh, in about 129 locations inside the building. Uh, in about two different schools inside inside the school district. The E400s are deployed in uh, corridors, common areas, and in classrooms. Uh, and one of the key uh, reasons for selecting the E400 was that they needed a high capacity that can go and support over uh, over 50 to 60 students, at, which is their current classroom strength, but also because be able to handle more uh, students, especially in conference room settings, or where they have a meeting, common meeting room. And the other thing that attracted the customer uh, to the E400 was not only the competitive price of the equipment itself, but also the availability of uh, free cloud-based management, as also the 24 by 7 support that they can get not only from their partner and system integrator, but all the way from Cambium as well. Another deployment uh, that we've done is in uh, New Delhi. Uh, with a resort deployment uh, where they picked Cambium uh, because they found that uh, it, when they looked at uh, their setup, uh, especially over there where they have a lot of concrete wall deployment, they found that the equipment performs very well uh, despite the presence of concrete walls. And once again, uh, they didn't have to break the bank to support a high capacity deployment. And another uh, attractive factor for them was also the fact that we interoperate not only with our controller, uh, but the access point directly interacts with uh, other third-party hotspot providers or portal providers. So this is a very important thing where uh, there, there you can uh, select a third-party company for your hotspot portal management tied with your property management system, and you don't have to bring the uh, controller in the mix. But having said that, they did, they did still install a controller, a local on-prem access controller for managing the APs on the ground. One of our uh, marquee deployments has been uh, the South Asian Games uh, in uh, India. And this is uh, a, an example where Cambium was able to bring wireless connectivity all the way to the stadium using our very long distance point-to-point -point, uh, PTP which, uh, which uh, in some of our testing has gone over 200 kilometers. And then uh, bring the wireless broadband distributed in a point to multi-point fashion, and then deploy the, the connectivity to the local stadium. So here in this deployment, uh, we were able to connect the press and the, and the VIP room with Wi-Fi access. And because of the uh, hilly terrain location, uh, they were able to use wireless backhaul to bring this all the way to the end customers. And in this case, because uh, high, high availability was a very important criteria because of the uh, highly visible nature of these games, uh, the partner invested in multiple AAAs and Cambium was able to support multiple AAAs with both an active AAA and a backup AAA. And then in addition to that, uh, with, with our 24 by 7 support uh, and our ability to deploy and operate these flawlessly, uh, the, the games and the events went, went off very well. This is another uh, deployment where we're bringing village Wi-Fi we, for partners who are able to uh, meet some of the very high demands in rural areas that aren't necessarily very profitable if they use high, high price equipment. So in this case, uh, what you see here in the picture is an EPMP 1000 hotspot looking down the street. Uh, the hotspot is able to uh, provide over 300 to 500 feet of coverage uh, in this terrain. And these hotspots are linked back to a data center centrally where they're able to collect uh, some of the uh, analytics on the users. And, and they sell access down by in, in chunks of 30 minutes. Uh, so you, you can go to the local vendor and, and get some of that access as well. 
And this is a very interesting uh, experiment in progress, uh, trying to build equipment that is sustainable in developing countries. And so in this case, the EPMP 1000 hotspot uh, was selected. Here's another sample of some of the other events that we covered. Uh, one of our uh, big events that we covered was the Mardi Gras in Brazil. Uh, with uh, some of those, uh, in this case, we used indoor equipment to cover some of the party rooms that are uh, where the parties take place, uh, just off of the main street. Uh, the E400, we had uh, 20 E400 deployment in, in one of these uh, centers with over 1,000 attendees, and we were and Cambium equipment was able to handle the high capacity and uh, make sure people got those Facebook posts out. This was a very interesting test. Uh, one of uh, one of our service provider partners uh, wanted wanted to provide managed services to schools, so they deployed. Uh, they are now in the process. They've just selected the E400, and this was a very interesting test because uh, they wanted to make sure that this is an access point that is truly capable of handling high capacity. So they set up over 1,000 100 over 100 Chrome notebooks uh, in the same room and then tested it with one E400. And they were uh, very surprised that the E400 was able to con handle over 100 concurrent YouTube video streams. And that's not something you typically see in uh, under, uh, you know, under $300 uh, price equipment. So all of this gives you a sample of uh, how we are deployed and where we are deployed. And throughout this presentation, uh, you've seen me refer over and over to affordable Wi-Fi. So what does affordability mean in terms of access points? Well, it means a very attractive price on the E400. Uh, it is priced at $199. On the outdoor equipment, the single band comes in at less than $150 and includes antennas and, and mounting packets. And the 11 AC outdoor comes in at $349. And these are all list prices. And then backing up all of this, Cambium gives you a free controller, the, which is the CN Maestro. That is available both on the cloud as well as on-premises, depending on which flavor of management you'd like to deploy. And so it is truly what we call affordable Wi-Fi. And then moving on beyond the products, uh, a quick recap of what Cambium brings you beyond the products. One is your uh, the ability to supply long distance and short distance wireless backhaul along with Wi-Fi, all managed under the same uh, management uh, software. Support, uh, we offer both 24 by 7 uh, support. We offer forum-based support where the community supports each other. And we offer field-based personnel as well. In addition to that, uh, we not only offer both indoor and outdoor equipment and wireless backhaul, but we are starting to tie all of this with one single management software as well. And, and now for our partners uh, and system integrators who would like to uh, deploy Cambium and who are, have been uh, working on opportunities, uh, we are very supportive of the channel. We offer deal registration as well. So you can register your deals and be protected uh, with a discount on large, op, uh, large deals as well. And so if you have questions on those, please reach out back to us. We'd be very happy to talk to you, understand your deployment, and support your deployment. So with that said, uh, we come to the conclusion of this presentation. And, and really, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, take any questions you have now. Or if you have questions later, please feel free to any time to reach out to us, post your questions on the forum, and somebody will always get back to you. Well, uh, th thank you for your time today. Uh, Colin, do we have any questions? Um, looks like Puneet has been answering them throughout. Um, so I don't see any questions he has not answered. I think we're OK. OK, great. So with, with that said, uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll, uh, we hope to hear back from you 
you've got any challenge or interest, uh, reach out to us and we will also help you plan your network and support it as well. Thank you for your time.